Hey, how are you? What a beautiful day. Hope you're enjoying it too. Lord is so good to us. Just look at that blue sky and you see a measure of God's faithfulness if we can wrap our minds around it. Blessed, blessed God. What a blessing he is. Uh, I wanted to mention a few things to you today from the Word of God about um, having faith and believing God as we travel through this land right here in this life. God saved us by His grace. We'll be in heaven one day, uh, but God doesn't take us directly there. He, he uh, leaves us here on earth. He has a purpose in it. Uh, we still have to face trials and tribulations, struggles. We still have that old unredeemed part of our sin nature to fight. But God has enabled us to deal with it. He has given us all that we need to stand for Christ, even in the midst when circumstances are contrary to that, the culture that we live in is becoming more and more uh, counter to that. Uh, it's a lot like the Israelites in the Old Testament when they were in the Promised Land. They were given the opportunity to go into the Promised Land. And God said, uh, go take a look at it. I've already given it to you. And you remember, uh, Moses arranged it where they would send a, a man from each tribe to scout out the land. And so they go in and they're just looking at the land to see what it was like, whether it was fertile land, how many trees were there, what the trees were, what the people were like, the fruits, and all that kind of deal. Uh, well, you know the story. There's, there's 10, 12 tribes, 12 men. 10 of them come back to you. You know what? We can't do it. It's just the, the guys are pretty big, and they don't like us, and, and the mountainous terrain, and they just made up all kinds of excuses. Caleb and and Joshua, the two spies, though, said, yeah, you know, we can do it. As long as we keep our eyes on God, as long as we embrace his promises, we can do it. Well, it, it, it made God really mad when, when they were not willing to go into the promised land. So mad that he, uh, uh, he penalized them. I mean, it, there's a consequence to our sin. And, and one of the greatest sins that we are probably not as aware of as we ought to is unbelief. I tell you, sometimes I, I have doubts and fears. Things come up in my life personally, and you just wonder if it's going to work out all right and whatever. We need to remember that God's promises are sure, and, and He's going to never leave us nor forsake us. And it, it might not mean that we uh, have everything just like we want it, but we're going to have everything just like God wants us to have it, and that's going to be the best. That's going to be the best for us because He is our shepherd. He's committed to leading us. Actually, we're his, we're his responsibility, uh, and we need to believe him and trust him. That is the big deal with God. So God gets really angry, and uh, you know you know the consequences, what happens. To everybody 20 years old and up was going to die in the wilderness. God made those guys walk around in the wilderness for 40 years, uh, a, a year for each day. They were to spy 40 days, so a year for each day they were to— uh, they were, they were penalized. So they were in the wilderness 40 years. And in that time, it was just a trek in through the desert. Uh, it, it was not the promised land. It was just a, a, a land of, of perils, of, of digging graves and burying people in the sand, so to speak. Uh, but the very little ones, the 20 years and younger, the very ones that the people that murmured and complained said, you know, our kids are going to be vulnerable, and we, we can't go because of that. They're the ones God delivered into the promised land. It's just amazing how God worked. Of course, Joshua and Caleb were because they believed God. What I want to try to say is I, I pray that God would bless us all to be encouraged to believe God, to trust him. Now, the more you read this book, the more you're going to have an idea of what God really wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. Uh, so we don't have to just wander around aimlessly. We have a Word of God, and he said it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Well, that path light goes through some ups and downs in life, and, and yet there's light. God says that his people shall not walk in darkness. We might stumble, but it won't be because of darkness. It'll be because if we take our eyes off of God and, and trip off on our own selfishness and, and, and the envy and strife that we don't have and make up in our lives. In, in Numbers chapter 13, uh, three verses from the very first of that chapter, which is the beginning of what I've just tried to describe, the 12 tribes going out, a man from each tribe to look at the land, the promised land. 
I want to notice a couple of things in these three verses. It says there, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. In other words, he's already given it to them. Okay, they, they don't have to go out and, 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 and earn it. Okay, it, it's a gift. We have the gift of God. God, God has justified us uh, freely by his grace. Uh, we're living in the kingdom of God here and now. Uh, it's not surely like heaven, but it's, it will be a taste of it. We'll uh, tune our lives and fix our affections on things above so we can live in this world like we really uh, enjoy God and are looking forward to the bliss. But I'm going to tell you what, this earth is a mighty wonderful place to live. It's nothing I know compared to what heaven's going to be, but, but if you got God in your life, man, every day is a good day. It's just a blessing. Uh, but he says, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. That was some of the leaders of those tribes went to spout the land. Every year, uh, this just happened this week here in, in my little place. Uh, we have some martins. These martins uh, are birds, of course, that are migratory, and we have really enjoyed them. Penny and I, when they come in the in the spring and stay most most of the summer, singing and catching mosquitoes and flies and just soaring. They're just a wonderful bird. You probably see them around your place. But, but they have a wonderful song when they're doing their business. Uh, but I have some gourds. Uh, you can't see them in this video, but they're just a few hundred yards away from where we are. And I uh, have a gourd, several houses I uh, put up uh, several years ago. Well, what the Martins do, they send scouts. Uh, and last week, Penny and I was walking around the pond, and we heard them, and I said, Gart Martins were back, and Penny saw them herself last week, a few days ago. Well, they're not here now. And, and I told Penny, I said, that's, that's the scouts. And that's what the Martin does. They'll send the scouts out about this time of the year, and the scouts will just kind of look over the nest, make sure everything's okay, and then they go back. And then, you know, in three or four weeks, they'll come back, and they'll come back in the glory of the birdmanship that they are. They'll, they'll be singing, they'll be nesting, and a few weeks after that, there'll be little baby martins, and it'll just be a, a wonderful scene of, of, of the Creator's uh, magnificence as He instills in those little birds the instincts. I don't know where all they come from, or where all they've been, or what's happened to them, but they come back. Uh, what I was thinking, though, the scouts, I, I hope that the scouts have a good report. I hope that they like the nest again and that they'll come back. And, and it sort of made me think about our lives as God's people. Every day, we, we, ha we have a scouting mission. In other words, you and I will face circumstances that need to validate whether or not God's promises are going to be sure or not. Now, now you can either believe it or not, but, but you're going to have challenges. When, when God put Israel, his, his people, in the promised land, you would think, and I would think, you know, if he's going to give them this land, why don't he just get rid of all the problems, the, the people, the enemies, the, 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 the hard, the lions and the tigers that would devour them and all the things that would hurt them uh, and all the poisonous plants and all that. Why don't he do that first? But he didn't. That's not how God does it. In fact, the book of Judges, we have a clear view there that God leaves the enemies in these places, in the promised land per se, just to test our faith. We need to be scouts, and we need to have a scouting mentality like Joshua and Caleb. In other words, we have to say, if this is what God says we're going to have, if this is what God promised us, then we can do it. It's not about us doing it. It's about God. It's about whether or not we believe God or not. So, so you know, you go out, uh, every time you face, every time I face in our lives, sure, you gotta, you got to have some obstacles. You're going to have a lot of reasons you might not make it. You're going to have a lot of reasons where 
things are going to be against you and earn some out of them. But, but if it's God's book, if it, if it honors God, whatever that is, if it, if it is going to help somebody, if it's going to, if it's going to be something that, uh, that, that we have to hide to do, we know that's wrong. But, but if, if it meets those criteria, then we, we need to bring back a good scouting report. And that good scouting report is to our Heavenly Father. Uh, yes, God. We, we need to be submissive to God rather than rebellious. I mean, these people, and we're a lot like these Israelites. I mean, we like to, we like to have the feeling, the, the good feelings. We like to see things. We like to, we like to have it in our hands. And, and if we meet some obstacles, if we're not careful, we're going to doubt God even loves us. We, we're going to doubt. We, we think we've done something so wrong. Now he's whipping us. And, and, he, and though he does that, most of our life on earth is about sanctification. It's about moving along the trails of life, becoming more like Jesus. Uh, Jesus did a scouting report, too. You know, he went in, he went in the wilderness itself for 40 days. It's amazing. God sends these people out for 40 days. Jesus went for 40 days, and, and, and he had, had fasted 40 days. He goes out uh, in the wilderness, and he finds uh, the devil, and the devil tries to, to, to give him a, a, make him have a bad report. Uh, he might think about that, that he needs to eat. He's hungry, so let's turn these uh, stones into bread. Or, you know, you say you're a son of God, well, just jump off this building and let's see if the angel's going to protect you. Just right on. Or, or, or you're not really who you ought to be, and if you bow down to me, the devil tells Jesus, I I'll make you, give you all these kingdoms. That didn't mean a hill of beans to Jesus. He, because, because why? He knew what his father has promised him. He knew that he had come to do the Father's will, and, and he knew that that scouting report was to God, that it, he could do it. And that's how we need to be. We need to be completely bent and sold out for Jesus as far as believing him and trusting him. Now, now this doesn't mean we have to believe all the deep doctrines of theology. It doesn't mean everyday life that we have a confidence that whatever we face, uh, if, if, it's, if it's good and right and what God would have us do, uh, we, can, we can claim that. that. That is the ground that we walk on. That is the, 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 the boundaries that we set. That is the way that we witness for the Lord that, that he's with us. And every time we draw back and we miss that blessing is what happens. And if we do that enough, we get to the point where there's consequences. There is consequences to unbelief. And, and you know, sometimes I, I think we focus too much on some of the hardcore sins, you know, like lying and cheating and stealing and adultery and those kind of things. But when we ought to be thinking about the easily besetting sin is how God describes it, the sin of unbelief. And uh, let's, let's ask God to help us believe. Uh, you know, the, the disciples, that should be our decree. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. We all have some. And so may God help our unbelief and just simply believe God. Because God is with us, whether we believe that or not. But it makes a whole lot of difference when we believe it as we face the trials and struggles that we have. And God is always honored in that way. And what a blessing it is. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you close to him. I, I know that uh, you're familiar with this. I do hope the Martins come back and we'll be looking for them. They, so far, they've done it every year. The scouts have been a, has said a good report. I, I want to be like a Martin. I want to I want to have a good report, and uh, you know uh, we have a reason to have a good report because because God has given us everything we need, and God uh, will never leave us. And God has promised that whatever challenges we face will be just instruments, a means of grace that he'll use to, uh, to strengthen us, to strengthen our faith, to stretch our hearts that we can see more blessings. You know, Caleb and Joshua, those, those were great men in God's, in God's kingdom, and they, they had a strong faith. Uh, they, had a, they had a tenacity for God. They just believed God, and, and I want to be more like that. That kind of stuff's catching, too. When you really have that kind of faith, 
it's going to make a difference in, in how you react to life, what, what you do. It's going to do so much for your energy, most physically and spiritually, but it's also going to affect a lot of people. Uh, that's a great witness, uh, a witness of just believing God and trusting Him no matter what. May the Lord bless you. Would you bow with me? Lord, we thank you for this most beautiful day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be your scouts and to spy out the land here, Lord. We know it's a sinful place, this place called this world, and that's because of the devil and because of his dominion over it, this kingdom of the world. But yet, you have placed us here, and we're not of this world. We are in it. And we're scouting it, Lord, and we know that your blessings are all around us. And so, Lord, bless us to look not so much at the problems, but at the remedy for the problems. May our focus always be on you. Strengthen our faith, O oh God. Increase it and help us, Lord, to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.